paper I wrote is uh, AI powered uh, solutions for missing data and pipeline risk assessments. So uh, like for uh, my introduction, um, I can um, let you guys know that again, my name is Sayed uh, Jahanzi Vadil Heather and I work for Enbridge Pipelines uh, in uh, Houston office. And uh, I'm a registered professional engineer. Um, let me just uh, give my background a little bit. And I've got, so I'm a registered professional engineer in Canada, in Canada and Alberta. I just moved to Houston last year. Um, I did complete my master's of engineering from University of Alberta. And I have almost uh, all, over two decades of uh, engineering uh, experience. Uh, most most of it is which is in our oil and gas sector that's why my uh like my recent position is also in uh, as a risk assessment engineering specialist uh within the uh like oil and gas industry uh specifically on the pipelines and facilities uh, associated with pipelines um so that's what kind of so that's that's what kind of uh, uh I think uh, gave me some ideas about uh, writing this paper because with the <clears throat> with the introduction of AI, that uh, that's been a big thing for uh, past uh, I would say a year and a half I believe, and there are experimenting going on and uh, uh, and uh, even like some so like some people or or some operators are using AI. Uh, for like a lot of good things. And it's um, uh, my only observation was that there was no guidelines or criteria in how we can safely use it, uh, especially because I work in the risk assessment sections and I review risk assessments and I uh, and my department is risk management. So there is uh, like critical risk assessments that are performed. And now with this, <clears throat> especially with the generative AI, there is ability to uh, to create like missing uh, data out of the data that's available, which is like, uh, uh, which I'll be presenting in this paper. So that's what kind of uh, gave me uh, the idea that I think there is some need to have some, uh, have a structured based approach on uh, on the AI use within, especially within the pipeline risk assessment industry, because that's what there I, I've, I'm coming from. So I know like there are a lot of IT expert and and uh, actual uh, real AI experts that probably are part of this 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 group and discussion. Uh, my expertise is not like actual IT or AI, but my only concern and uh, the reason for writing this paper is that I know there are techniques out there uh, for AI, but when they are applied to uh, pipeline industry, there should be a proper structured risk-based approach that that should be followed to ensure where we can safely uh, leverage uh, AI techniques <clears throat> or especially like AI generated data. So my agenda, I'll just uh, quickly go over the abstract that already, uh, it's already part of the paper. So this is, this whole presentation is again, like it's a, uh, uh, in a nutshell, what, what exactly is covered in the paper. I'll just try to present that. So I'll uh, have a brief introduction, then I'll go over some, uh, some basic AI techniques that are being used uh, to generate uh, like missing data through machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, then I'll talk, like, talk about some balancing innovation with prudence means like, okay, there is this technique uh, out there which can be utilized, but we should give it some thought that where it can, if we don't use it wisely, then it can actually uh, harm us. And then I'll have a, uh, to, to present my case, I actually used uh, a, a hypothetical example of a, uh, of a pipeline where there is a vintage pipeline where we have like some missing pieces of data that are required for risk assessments <clears throat> and how exactly it could go uh, it could result in a kind of a non-conservative scenario. And based on that, uh, there are some solution that's are, that are presented here, uh, which is again, like the main uh, meat of this whole paper is that uh, how exactly we can leverage AI in a safe manner. 
uh, especially like looking at the risk side of the uh, risk picture. And then, and then again, when we are using it, uh, then what are the guidelines for AI application and what are the conclusions? So in my abstract, I already kind of, uh, uh, and I shared that already that there are, there are demonstrated potential uh, in overcoming diff difficulties, uh, especially for then complete data and AI and ML <clears throat> provides, a, provide, provides a big solution. Uh, to that, it's a uh, it's a great tool. There are like great techniques uh, related to machine learning and AI that can be leveraged to to again create the missing uh, data, especially like generative AI using generative AI, and uh, and then but again like there are some pitfalls and uh, potential risks associated with that, and based on uh, based on that, uh, I have uh, presented uh, like some uh, examples and I have an uh, like analyzed some some scenarios and that are discussed uh, in the paper which I'm presenting in this presentation as well then strategies to <clears throat> balance AI in reliance with the real data acquisition uh, yeah I'll be discussing those as well and then some uh, uh, like uh, how the how the structured approach should look like and what are the cost benefit consideration? And there is a concept of hybrid approach that I've also introduced, which I'll discuss in this um, presentation as well. So um, again, like, as I said, like my expertise and my past background is again, pipeline related. And this paper is explicitly uh, 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 associated with the uh, oil and gas and pipeline industries uh, and risk assessments that are performed there. Uh, if I can't see the uh, the chat, so if there are any questions, if you guys can save it for for the end, then I can certainly <clears throat> answer those. So uh, uh, so as you can see, like there are uh, even just this is just the data of North America that there is almost over a million uh, kilometer of pipeline, um, especially oil and gas pipelines uh, that 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 we have. Uh, and this is, uh, if you if go global or worldwide, it will be even more, like a lot more. And this is, uh, uh, the second bullet is about like 45% like of this. This is just like looking at the oil pipelines, but 45% is uh, almost more than 50 year old. So the older the line is, <clears throat> the there's more chances that, that, that there are key pieces of information of those pipelines might not be available because uh, of transitions from one operator to the other, there's buying and then there's selling and all that, those kind of things go on. And then the data like back then used to be like uh, paper-based and may not have been kept in a great format, the older drawings and all that. So it's there are challenges with data. Uh, so with that, like uh, you can imagine that this, this uh, could, like very exactly this whole uh, structure can be applicable to. So this is uh, uh, in, in fact, like would be very much useful in a lot of cases, given that how much old pipelines and vintage uh, pipeline structure do we have in just in North America and probably also in the world, uh, all over the world. <clears throat> uh, then traditional methods, uh, again, like, uh, we know that uh, specifically for pipelines, uh, if, if there's a missing uh, key information on a particular pipeline, for example, and I will be discussing that in my example as well, like uh, the pipe grade, for example. So that data is not easily acquired. A lot of data like for uh, like, because the pipelines are buried underground. So you'd have to like excavate them to actually do some sort of testing and get that get information available. And that process is quite expensive and cumbersome. Uh, uh, so may not be prudent to, to apply for all the missing data and not even practical. Um, so that's where, that's where like AI and ML can be, machine learning can be applied, uh, employed to fill these data gaps. And, uh, but how exactly they should be applied, that's what the paper will talk about. And uh, uh, this this concept and the the mm, the process that I've introduced technically is a little bit high level. It 
is again like based on <clears throat> pipeline risk assessments. However, it can be applicable to other um, other industry and uh, facilities and uh, other parts of the oil and gas and even beyond the oil and gas industry as well, because the concept itself is is pretty simple and straightforward and can can be applicable <clears throat> to industry industries outside of our uh, oil and gas. So as I said, like, uh, especially like talking from the oil and gas industry perspective, the missing data is a common issue and uh, already uh, pretty much given an idea in my introduction slide that there's quite a bit of uh, pipelines out there that are older than 50 year old and probably with, uh, with missing pieces of information. Uh, current technology to determine missing data is costly and complex. I already talked about that. And uh, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning can predict missing values based on available data. This approach comes with, but this approach comes with the risk, especially, especially when the, there's a safety critical risk assessments going, uh, we have to perform. Uh, so some AI techniques that, that can be leveraged to, uh, to actually, uh, uh, create the missing data. Uh, for example, like the, if there's a 100 kilometer of pipeline with, for, uh, for instance, with missing uh, pipe diameter, which is like probably not uh, not not very common. We do know, uh, in most cases, we do know the, the pipeline diameter sizes. But uh, for example, we, we're missing that data so, and it's a multi-diameter pipeline. So we if you have 80% of the data and 20% is missing, then based on uh, based on the eighty percent of the data available, we can train the model to uh, to generate the data for the remaining uh, for the missing twenty percent, and uh, and then there are techniques to to do that. Um, there's supervised learning, and that there is uh, unsupervised learning as well, where the group where the, uh, especially like for these cases that uh, for pipeline cases, I think k-means clustering is one of the one of the common uh, one that is currently being exper experimented with, um, where uh, uh, like uh, groups of data are clustered into like feature similarity and uh, it can help in for missing data for similar clusters. Because it's a linear asset and it goes like, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of expanded over like uh, uh, a lot of kilometers. So, so that's why like, uh, uh, this is one of the techniques that's currently being experimented with, at least with, uh, if I can speak to what I've seen so far within our industry. And uh, so, but again, like these are really good, great techniques. And uh, again, like you've seen the magic of AI in our, uh, especially like generative AI, when it comes down to pictures, videos, and uh, like even if there's two, pieces of pictures you you have side by side and then you just tell the the model that the, there's a missing piece between these two pictures and i've seen that uh, happening uh, within the models that are actually available online that it can fill those gaps and and you would find that these two pictures are connected in in one big long picture uh, as uh, as they're like as they're, there's a seamless connection, so it looks that they're the same. So the it, the, the the tools are there and they're really great. However, like uh, for pictures and art, yeah, it could like even if it, there's a little bit of here and there, we would accept that. But when it comes down to uh, figuring out what data it could be for a particular pipeline. Uh, then that could be that could be something really critical because that data is actually being used for some critical uh, risk assessments. So integrity and quality of training data is critical and uh, validation and review. So AI models <clears throat> should be validated against known data point. So even like the results that we get for the remaining missing data, there is uh, there should be some validation uh, performed um, uh, against. Um, the known data points to to see uh, to create some sort of a unity plot to understand like how much uh, how accurate the AI models predictions are. <clears throat> Transparency and structured approach. So the AI models also work on some logics and 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 there are some assumptions. So all the limitations and uh, 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 
and again like assumptions that are being used within a within a, a, a AI model we should be very clearly identifying those and we should be we should know about those because that that will give us uh, the idea that how much we can trust this model and where is this model may have some limitations um, and then the logical structured approach for decision making <clears throat> is is again is, is is something that is required underestimation of risk so as a result of like not doing these uh, things or leveraging ai where uh, where the risk <clears throat> could be underestimated there could be those scenarios where uh, where we could get uh, some non conservative uh, data points um, and and with that like we can we can get into some potential uh, we can get into potential of overlooking high consequence scenarios So one of the hypothetical example, which is uh, kind of a base, which is main, uh, I think, uh, mainly discussed in, in my paper. Uh, so this is again, like consider technically a gas pipeline <clears throat> where, uh, where substantial uh, pipe grade data is unavailable. And this is, this is, not uncommon this is uh i, I won't say it's 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 uh, it's uh, all the time it's the case it's not like that there but there are some vintage pipelines where we have where we where operators may not have that sort of like pipe grade data available um and in certain cases for for this hypothetical example where i'm trying to present my case is that for this particular uh, uh piece of pipe or piece of pipeline uh originally prior uh, the the area one of the one of the area within that pipeline was uh, uh, was not a cons uh, residential area, and uh, and that's why like when there's a residential area, the the area is considered high consequence area like HCA, and uh, and the wall thickness and pipe grades and everything is util used uh, for that construction of pipe is more conservative to make sure to ensure more safety of the people um, or even like if it could be it could be environmental uh, 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 HCA as well where there could be a water body and and uh, we don't want any kind of oil leaking into the water body as well so so based on that like uh, 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 but there was a uh, so, so what happened is that the, there was a construction that happened after the construction was done so Originally, the area was not uh, uh, not an HCA, but later on, when the construction happened um, uh, near the near the pipeline, uh, on on some of the spots, the the classification of that area changed from low consequence area to high consequence area. Now, the if you are the the model that was generating the uh, missing pieces of the data for for that particular pipeline. <clears throat> It was using a logic that if it is a high consequence area, the wall thickness should be this, and the and the uh, pipe grade should be this because uh, because that's how it was on the on the rest of the pipeline. So it kind of learned from the training data, and then based on the training data, it was predicting that. However, in this particular case, because the origin or the original at the time of construction, the pipe in that section was not at CA. Um, uh, but the model, because it it was looking at the present time, and it considered that it's an HCA, so it must have been a conservative uh, pipe grade, which is X70, uh, for example, and uh, that I've used in my example, and that's why like uh, it kind of gave those type of values. So, so this misclassification resulted in non-conservative risk assessment, uh, potentially leading to unsafe conditions, and uh, this example illustrates. Uh, a broader issue within the oil and gas industry where missing data can lead to significant safety and operational risk if not handled correctly. So, so in this particular example that I've just given, so, uh, so for example, with the entire pipeline, if it has like eight segments, so you can see the example uh, in the table 
that the Etsy status uh, at the time of construction. Um, so was it Etsy? No. Was it Etsy? No. Yes. Yes. So they're pretty much in line at like current status and the uh, status at the time of construction. But the last two segments, like seven and eight, uh, they were not at CA, and now they are at CA because of that residential construction that I've just talked about. So AI predicted AI predicted an, uh, a pipe grade of X70, uh, which, is, uh, which is, again, a stronger grade. Um, however, because uh, at the time of construction, it was not at CA, the, the real pipe data was actually X42 which was uh, a less, uh, um, uh, which is like kind of a, I would say non-conservative uh, in, in, in terms of that. It was relevant to what, what uh, uh, a non-HCA pipe rate could be accepted based on the codes. So ideally, like uh, the, the regulation and codes would normally, uh, if, there's a, if there's a classification change, they would require to, uh, to upgrade the pipe and, and, and all that. But so, but this again, like as I said, this is a hypothetical example because this is something that can actually uh, happen and can be missed. So here you can see like uh, uh, the real data show the lower grade uh, than AI predicted grade. So in the last two tables, you can see that there's a discrepancy between X70 and X42. Uh, now what that resulted in, so, if you complete a risk assessment, and this was uh, uh, again like based on this data. So what happened is that these pipe attributes, like for example, pipe grade, wall thickness, diameter. Um, uh, so there are some; they, these are some really key attributes that feeds into the risk assessments to predict that at what pressure uh, a, a pipe can actually burst or see a rupture. So. If we don't use these correctly, or if you use like some non-conservative values, the risk can be underestimated. And that's exactly what happened in this scenario. As you can see, like for the first uh, 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 six segments, like the risk were for with the AI data and with the real data was exactly the same. However, for the section segments seven and eight, where the uh, uh, pipe grade was uh, not the same and was under predicted, you can see that there, the real risk is actually quite high compared to the what the AI predicted data um, uh, like calculated the risk. So, and that's uh, highlighted section is the is the risk delta that that you can see that uh, we uh, we can see because of uh, using AI data and which is different from the real data. So what's the solution? So this this actually could lead uh, again. This, this is a hypothetical example, but in certain cases, this could actually lead to even some significant incident, depending like uh, 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 on like it also depends on the consequence as well. So in certain cases, maybe if it's a remote area and if it's not a populated area, uh, same issue probably not not have been a big issue. Uh, but if it's right in the middle of a residential area or right near a water body, then this, if if the if the uh, risk uh, realizes or uh, the likelihood increases, uh, the consequence that'll be realized would be really really high, and and that's where and that's what I'm gonna be talking about. Like what could be the solution to these kind of such, uh, situations could be. So as you can see, the strategy uh, for balancing. AI is, uh, I'm sorry, I think I'm a little bit over time, because, but I started late, so I'm probably going to take like uh, uh, six or seven minutes more. Uh, so identify, uh, uh, so one of the proposed solution that, that I have uh, uh, presented in my paper is that uh, leveraging AI to solve the missing piece of data um, uh, within the risk assessment puzzle. So the first thing is again, like what data is missing? That's something you need to identify for sure. And then uh, understand how the data is used. So that's establishing the context uh, and undesired scenario where the data is, uh, is used as an input. So in certain, certain puts are more critical compared to, uh, compared to the others. For example, this uh, uh, by grade data is important in predicting in the equation where where uh, 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 
where a pi pipeline rupture is actually modeled. However, there could be other other uh, uh, parameters that are, might be more important. For example, the wall thickness is even more important than than that. So that's where like you need to understand that how critical that data is. So if it would if it would have been wall thickness, yes, it could have even have more like very very high uh, impact or sensitivity to the to the risk. But for uh, for pipe grade. It, it it would still have some uh, it and that's what I can demonstrate it that there was a still sensitivity to the risk, but uh, but one could be more than the other. So it also so that also needs to we need to understand that how critical that one uh, that piece of data is, how exactly it feeds into the equation that uh, that that kind of gives us the overall likelihood or probability of failure. So estimate the cost and the data uh, uh, of data acquisition versus using AI uh, or machine learning models. So again, like we know that uh, for the example that I've used for this specific uh, data, if we are going out there and getting like the real data, uh, we have to do that. We have to dig the, uh, the the pipeline. We have to perform some certain tests on every like uh, at, at different data uh, points. And uh, and then figure out what exactly the pipe grade of this particular uh, pipe is. How uh, so? It is expensive. But then again, like it could be. It, this is again. This is a generalized model, not just for this specific scenario. So this process actually is telling you to just figure it out. It could be. It could be that the data acquisition, the real data acquisition, may not be that as expensive. Um, for example, like uh, for older pipeline, if you need to know the wall thickness, now you can run uh, inline inspection tools that can just uh, give you what the wall thickness of the pipe is. So we can get that, and uh, if we can get, we can run one inline inspection tools for two, three hundred miles, and and we can get the wall thickness of all that data. So uh, and then understand the sensitivity of the data. So sensitivity again, like a. Uh, 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 is uh, for example like for for the pipe grade what could be the worst pipe grade that could be out there specific to that pipeline or any pipeline or any case that that you're uh, calculating and what could be the the best case, possible case and um, and and that'll give uh, you uh, the so and calculate the risk based on the worst case and the best case with that specific input uh, that what's the best best possible scenario and what the worst possible scenario, and that delta of the risk is actually will tell you the sensitivity of uh, of the overall of this particular input, that how critical that input is to the to the to the likelihood of a failure that we are trying to uh, calculate here, and then when the the because the risk is actually a combination or a product of uh, likelihood and consequence, so consequence also plays a big big role in the overall risk calculation. So when we are, when we already know what the likelihood of certain um, uh, these type of inputs of pipe pipeline properties, they they mostly feed into the probability calculation. However, the consequence. For example, if if uh, if it's a high consequence area, if it's a uh, near a near a water body, of course the consequence uh, uh, would be would be like really high compared to something that's not in a um, high consequence area. So maybe for the same case, you may have two different strategies depending on what the overall consequence is for that particular piece of input. Um, and based on so so based on like uh, and that's why the, when we call it, when we calculate risk we multiply the prob probability with the consequence and with that whatever the company thresholds are if it's uh, if the risk based on risk matrix if it comes out as high then you invest then we have like this final data point the yellow the yellow process. Uh, uh, and where the process ends, where we actually uh, say that we have to either invest in the uh, actual real data acquisition because the risk is high, or use a conservative value because again, same reason the risk is high, or uh, like use some sort of a hybrid approach. I have like a separate slide on hybrid approach, so I'll talk about that. Uh, moderate risk, uh, uh, if the risk is moderate and, and we have like, uh, so we have like this ALARP uh, concept, it's itself, uh, it's a, uh, 
it could be a paper of uh, there could be a paper on LARP itself because it's still like a, a, a not very popular concept, but it's been out there for quite some time. It's called as as low as reasonably practicable, which means that if it's a moderate risk, you would do some sort of like a cost benefit analysis and then figure out that whether we should go whether we should go and treat it or we should just uh, not treat it and accept it, accept the risk. And if the risk is low, then it clearly indicates that yes, using AI uh, probably may not be that big of a problem because, uh, because the model can be utilized to, because the risk is not that high. So uh, AI models can be actually extensively used and, and, and the, uh, where, where, wherever like the risk is not very high and we have missing data. So, so that's kind of a, in a nutshell, what the process kind of talks about. I'll just explain some, some aspects of that. Uh, missing data, again, like uh, cataloging all required data, determining locations of missing data, assessing the impact of um, gaps on risk assessment, understanding how the data is used, mapping the data to corresponding um, uh, risk model, and evaluating relevant significance in the calculations. Uh, Again, like estimating the cost of real data acquisition versus AI model. That's also a, a, a key piece that I've already discussed. So this is just explaining uh, a little bit more the same steps that I've uh, uh, talked about. Uh, ELARP again, like is uh, as already explained that this is mainly like a cost benefit analysis. So it's kind of looks at how much cost are we uh, uh, putting in for how much risk benefits. So how much risk is are we reducing? And there is ways that we can convert our risks into dollar values. So which are called risk dollars. And that's how you can do like a very uh, apple to apple comparison um, on, on, on like uh, how much cost is going into uh, reducing how much risk. And, uh, and there, there are aspects that, 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 that conversion is, is pretty much different for like when it comes down to reputational risk or health and safety or environmental or operational risk. So there are different categories and that, that itself is a, is a whole new uh, can of worms. So I'm not going into those, but this is just giving you a concept of there is that uh, basically it's a, uh, it's a proportional measure that ensuring that the risk reduction measures are proportional to the risk level. And the hybrid approach again is uh, again as I said, like when the risk is high, or if it's not ALARP, which is not not as low as reasonably practical, means that you have to treat it. So then uh, we need to identify critical data points, focus on the most impactful data on the risk assessment, uh, and uh, fill in like less critical data gaps with AI predictions. So. So the hybrid approach is again like uh, instead of like in certain cases if if it's still like a, uh, investing in the real data acquisition is extremely expensive, then we is, we can use kind of a hybrid approach where we go and collect the data at certain reasonable reasonable distances, and uh, not for the entire pipeline, but at least like maybe at every ten kilometer uh, every ten mile uh, sorry every forty feet or every. 100 feet or, and then and, and at, at those data points, you have like the real data. And so that we have like more relevant data to train, to train our model to generate the, 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 the machine learned uh, data. So that technically is uh, sort of considered as a, as a hybrid approach. And then continuous validation, regularly validate and update the AI predictions with newly acquired data to enhance the model accuracy and reliability. Uh, again, like some guidelines that I've presented that if we are using uh, AI models, we just kind of, we should continuously verify that, validate those. Uh, uh, we should be using, um, um, we should use probably multiple models to compare results and uh, cross-reference AI generated data with real data and uh, apply conservative safety margins to AI predictions wherever we, have, we are using assumptions, account for uncertainties and potential errors within the model uh, and continuous monitoring and updating, regular, regularly monitor um, uh, and update AI models as the technology advances and as the new data becomes available. Um, and again, like clear documentation and uh, again, the risk-based approach that I've already kind of talked about.
So uh, in a nutshell, uh, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning can be uh, can address missing data and pipeline risk assessments. Again, like as I said, like there is there could be a lot of low risk or medium risk uh, you know, scenarios where this machine learning and AI can be very well, it could be it could be a game changer. It can be extensively used. However, when it comes down to the point where the risk is high and the stakes are high, that's where we need to balance uh, with the real data acquisition for safety and reliability. Uh, robust gui guidelines and cautious implementations needed. Decision based on detailed consequence and risk analysis and cost-benefit considerations. Real data acquisition recommended for high-stake situations, as I already said. Um, AI can provide cost-effective and efficient alternative for less critical systems. Uh, and that's the part I've already covered too. So that's uh, pretty much what my presentation is. Sorry if I went a little bit over time. Mm -hmm. Thank you.